Hello, my name is Liz Marshall. I'm a guide at Monticello. Sarah Myrant Fawcett bravely confronted injustice in the 1860s in Cincinnati, and she won. This is her story. Sarah Myrant's early years have not been documented, but as a young girl living in a large city, Charleston, South Carolina, she was sent to an even larger city New Orleans. Myrant was learning the trade of coiffe femme, a woman hairstylist. Her instructor was French, and she was also learning about scalp and hair treatments, hair care products and goods. These are transferable skills and potential money makers. The man who Sarah Myrant was going to marry, Peter Fawcett, was born here at Monticello. Fawcett's mother, was a cook, and his father was a blacksmith. In the 1840s, when Myrant was 19 or maybe 20 years old, she was taken to Cincinnati, Ohio. Cincinnati was experiencing some significant growth. A journalist wrote that Cincinnati, known as the Queen of the West, was distinguished for order, enterprise, public spirit, and liberality. People were flocking to Cincinnati, and so too did the Fawcett family. How Sarah Myrant and Peter Fawcett met is not known, but they married on September 28, 1854. She was 28 years old, he was 39. Their marriage was an equal partnership. Both were dedicated to faith, family, justice, education, business, civic organizations, abolition. By the 1870s, Peter Fawcett had established his own catering company and was known to be the most prominent caterer in the area and the indispensable major domo at wedding fests and entertainments. While Peter Fawcett's reputation was being made, Sarah Fawcett's reputation was being made too. By the 1860s, she had an elite clientele consisting of many of the white women in the city. She was their hairstylist. One day, she was leaving to meet a client, a bride-to-be, for her wedding hair appointment. She decided to take the streetcar, the conductor would not let her on the platform. Sarah Fawcett held strongly onto the rails as the horses started moving. All the while, the conductor tried to push her off. After three blocks, she let go, sustaining injuries which took days before recovery. She decided to sue the Passenger Railroad Company for damages. The Passenger Railroad Company claimed that since she was never on the platform, they did not owe her any damages, though she was given $65 for being refused passage. Fawcett's strength opened the door to larger legal passage for black women and children to ride inside the streetcar while black men could ride on the platform outside. Two years later, Judge Bellany Store who knew Sarah Fawcett and her reputation stated that all persons, regardless of color and sex, were to be permitted on streetcars. This case was almost 100 years before Rosa Parks took her rightful place on the bus. Sarah and Peter Fawcett both were prominent members of the African American community in Cincinnati. They were involved with the Underground Railroad. They both were active in the church on Baker Street, now known as Union Baptist Church. Sarah and Peter Fawcett bought the land together for the new Union Baptist Cemetery, where they both are buried. Sarah Fawcett's business acumen was once again evident in her responsibilities at a local orphanage for black children raising money for a new building. 
Sarah Fawcett remained as manager of that orphanage until her death at age 80 in December of 1906. What an incredible woman.